reading on Sunday and the first reading for, for Wednesday. No. Identical. Mm -hmm. You're identical. <laughs> See? If you read the email and the attached materials, you will know. <laughs> Speak for thy servant hears, Samuel says. Again. So we move on. Psalm 40. Here am I, O Lord. The same. Second reading, respect for the body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The body is not meant for immorality, but for the Lord. <clears throat> Commentary 12 to 14. Starts with line 4. Galatians 4, 31. This freedom means that the Christian is no longer a slave of the devil or of sin, and by sharing through baptism in Christ's king, kingship, has obtained dominion over all the things of the earth. That should be highlighted, underlined, double underlined. This is the meaning of freedom. You have dominion over all the things of the earth because you have Christ's kingship. Okay? The rest is self-explanatory, so you're fine. Look at commentary 15 to 18. Sexual immorality. This is the route one must take when tempted against chastity. You must shun it. Temptations against other virtues can be overcome by putting up resistance. But in this case, one does not win by putting up resistance because the more one thinks about the thing, the more influence one becomes. So, one wins by pleading, that is, by avoiding unclean thoughts completely and by avoiding all occasions of sin. St. Thomas Aquinas says that. Commentary 19 to 20. Fornication is not only a profanation of the body of Christ, but also the temple of the Holy Spirit, for God dwells in the soul, through grace, as in a temple. I no longer belong to myself. You were born to the Christ. John 1, Gospel, the calling of the first disciples. Behold the Lamb of God. So he didn't say the other disciples. <laughs> I know one was Andrew. Commentary 35 to 39, second paragraph. The two disciples already had a keen desire to see the Messiah. John's words moved them to try to become friends of our Lord. It's not merely natural curiosity, but Christ's personality which attracts them. See that? They want to get to know Him, to be taught by Him, and to enjoy His company. John the Baptist says, I must decrease, he must increase. Do you think he felt fine with that? 
his own disciples fled him and went to Jesus? I believe so, because, I mean, he, he already is admitting his calling. He's accepting. <clears throat> well, John the Baptist himself said that uh, he must decrease, Jesus must increase. Plus, his time was <clears throat> done. Remember, the greatest man ever born is John the Baptist, ever born of a woman. John the Baptist is the last prophet in the Old Testament and the first prophet in the New. The rest I have talked about. So anyway, going back, the call. You must heed the call. You must recognize the star in your life. Because this is disconnects you from last Sunday to next Sunday. Remember, they were attracted by the personality of Jesus. Because they, they, they see Jesus with their eyes. We, we don't have that privilege. Okay? So, for us, we need to recognize the star, we need to heed the call, and we need to hear the call, and we need to respond to the call. The thing is, this call can come in many forms. It can come, uh, maybe some one person would talk to you, maybe you would hear a preacher, Maybe you would listen to some music or meditation, or maybe your own stray of thought would just breeze through your mind. Hmm? There's the call. There's the call. Is it clear? From last Sunday to next Sunday, and give you everything. <coughs> okay? Any question? Of course, no question. <laughs> of course, of course, of course not. Yes, yes, yes. St. Peter's? Are you kidding me? <laughs>